Good morning, everybody. Hope you slept well. Let's do this morning's Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Last night I did a little video talking crap to a guy that left a comment about I should have bought a Chevy or a GMC. His comment was in response to my water in the door video on the F-150 and pulling the plugs out of the bottom. Little did this gentleman know, I drive a GMC as well. In turn, there were a bunch of people saying random things, nothing too bad or whatever. Everything pretty much just give him hell. So. Yeah, I just make these videos and stuff to make make people think maybe sometimes about some of the stupid things that they say. But this is a good old truck. This GMC Sierra is it's the first year for the AFM. I think they call it DFM stuff now. <laughs> some guy was saying in the comments section because it just doesn't uh, shut down half of the lifters when it goes into active fuel management. It shuts down all of them. Well, double, double the lifters get shut down because the engine shuts down one of our uh subscribers here said you never really showed us the work on the bed yes i did i did show you guys but i figure i'll show you again where they cut out more of the rust and welded new metal and stuff in So I had the bedsides cut out and new metal put in. This being an aluminum truck, it don't rot out like the steel ones do. Yeah, it can corrode and stuff like that, but inside the doors and stuff like that ain't gonna rot out in an aluminum truck because of some water from the rain, you know? Here soon, we're gonna get a new set of LED lights put in. Um, the stock lights are coming out the full LED pro projection lights are going in they got their own like ballast on each light and stuff like that I showed you guys yesterday it's like a $1,300 kit I was supposed to take the winter tires off of it but the winter tires really ain't wearing so I just left them on um, they're MTs they're not ATs they're MTs but I found that these MTs running these MTs all year seemed to have run and, and they were they were a lot stickier and performed better in, on the road than the 80s did yeah they're noisier but they actually performed better so i just left them on because they're still like new from when i bought them before the winter people ask me all the time why do i wear why do i run blizzax all year round well you can find the original generation blizzax for pretty cheap you can find a set for about 600 bucks and i get two or three years out of them before I have to replace them again these I put on before or yeah before the winter last year and they they shown barely anywhere at all these I've been running on the car these Blizzax I've been running on the car for a few years and they still what are they at 50% tread yeah they're still at about 50% tread and they still they're great they still run great and go down the road great you know so i guess to each their own right I had a young man ask me last night, he said, 
I have an opportunity to go into the plumbing field and I'm already like working on it, getting in and stuff like that. Uh, and I know I, I, I don't mind it. It's not ultimately what I want to do. I want to be an automotive technician or mechanic. That's where I'm the happiest. And all I could think to myself was, I'm just going to be straight with you. All I could think to myself was, just go be a plumber, man. The pay is consistent. You're going to be taken care of. There's going to be unions and stuff. You're always going to have something to do. There's always going to be something to fix. The same with a car. Except there's too many variables with the car, man. There's, you know, it's, it's, I was honest with him. I said, if you can find an hourly shop, bigger independent shops that are doing very well, that send their technicians to training and stuff, that have competitive hourly pay and stuff, are a gold mine. But honestly, the best place to start, if you're going to get your schooling and stuff paid for, is starting at a dealership, at a competitive rate, a busy dealership that needs their technician certified. Because if you go to a regular small dealership that doesn't have a lot going on, they don't have, they can't, they can't put out a lot of money for technician training and stuff like that. It'll be years before you get anything done with training. And the pay, the pay if it's not competitive, I mean, what are you going to, you know, kick yourself for, for not trying, at least trying the plumbing thing that you know it's going to be competitive pay. You know there's going to be a plumber's union. You know they're going to take care of you and stuff like that. I mean, for the most part, if that's the route you go. But I said, all I can do is speak about the automotive field. If it was me and I wanted to go into the automotive field, I would pick a dealership. I would pick um, a union shop with a minimum rate of, you know, like 35, if you're during the slow season, 35 hours a week or something like that is what your minimum guarantee is. And I would uh, make sure that I had in writing and stuff the fact that I was going to be sent to training uh, after my probation is up. I would be uh, within the first month or something like that. I would have my opportunity to go to my first class um, to make sure that they're serious about having you work there. And then you can slowly work your way up, especially at 19 years old, living at home with mom and dad, still trying to do something with your life. You have time at that age. And by the time you put five or six years in, you'll be at a competitive wage. You know, it'll be, you'll be a, uh, semi-skilled or, uh, or or already a journeyman and with Ford you can make uh, master in five years you can make senior master in five years if your dealership is high speed enough and gets you to all the transmission classes as well you know at five years you can be actually senior master with Ford if you if you're high speed if you do it enough just like in the military you can make your staff sergeant by like four or five years or something we had a guy make his staff sergeant because dude was high speed he went to every bit of training he did all the extra stuff you had to do to, to make it. And by the time he hit like five years or something like that, uh, he was already a staff sergeant. But he had put in a time and his unit had taken care of him and seen that he was high speed. And that, 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 that's, that was his drive. He wanted to spend the rest of his life in the military. And when they seen that, they put the time into him. And a good dealership or a good independent shop will do the same to you. Um, but it's going to be hell, man. Dealer politics warranty paying your way and having to fight through all the warranty bs and stuff like that i told him if it was me and i had the opportunity to go into a trade like plumbing or siding or you know concrete work or something like that whatever it may be steel building uh s s structures and stuff in the city or whatever i would have probably went another route had i known what i know now but if automotive is your thing this is your best bet union Hourly, dealership, benefits package, guarantee. That's your best bet. Now, if you get a dealership that says, oh, I'll pay you the same union scale and take care of your medical and everything else, but you ain't getting no guarantee. and yeah, Sorry, bud. Don't do it. It's just not worth it to me. I've already been down that road. First couple of years, it was great. As soon as COVID hit with no guarantee or anything like that, there were many, many weeks where it was only 20, 25 hours of work coming in per technician. And we struggled. Bad. But there wasn't, no, there wasn't nothing to cover us. There wasn't no union. There wasn't no minimum guarantee. And it sucked for years. You know. And there's nobody there when there's no union to protect you. I mean, 
sometimes the union does a crappy job as it is protecting you but i'm just telling you right now if you at least if you have a union there's there's rules put in place they look at the dealership and they tell them hey you know charlie hasn't had training since you know january and here it is august or something like that i think it's time to start putting him in some kind of class or something like that let's get his next training session or something done he's up for his next bout of class or something and uh they'll actually say something and on your behalf if it's not getting done they'll actually try to step in and you know help move things along if it's a good union you ain't getting that without one and trust me i don't really like unions but i see a place for them there's a lot of politics in unions and uh unfortunately it's one of the only things that's going to help you actually get along how do y'all feel about would you get into a a uh, trade other than mechanics or would you go be a mechanic i know a lot of guys are saying that why would i be i'm a plumber i'm an electrician i'm a hvac guy i'm i do everything with automotive so a lot of guys are leaving the field and they're actually going getting in and getting their hvac certification and they're like i get paid no matter what now you ain't saying no if i'm on the clock working for a company as a hvac guy I'm getting paid no matter what. So, there ain't no haggling with the customer anymore. People want their air conditioning running. People want their plumbing and their electrical, you know, working. And and they don't try to haggle with you with that. Anyway, uh, even if they do, it ain't nowhere near as bad as the automotive field and stuff like that. If it's working, it's working. So, a lot of guys are leaving the automotive field to go into other parts of the trades because they just don't feel like the frustration of being in the automotive field is... Is really worth it. What do y'all think about that? What's your what's your take on that whole thing? Let me know what you think. Y'all have a great day.